could literally go out with two men and it would be okay. Child, you sitting at the table with two men, the first thing people thinking, if it's one female sitting at the table with two men and she looks fairly decent, I'm like, oh, they about to fuck up. If you have not already done so, please remember to a like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky will be our camellia flower. I think we got a few of the white left, the black left, and I think we got three gray camellia flowers left. Anyway, go on over there and check it out. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, woo. Ooh, y'all been wanting this thing right here. This thing like the hot potato, baby. Let's talk about Divided Soul. The life of Marvin Gaye. This is going to be a good one. Marvin's father, Marvin Pence Gaye Sr., the third of 13 children, was born on a farm along Catnip Hill Pike in Jessamine County, Kentucky, on October 1st. 1914. Pence was the name of the German doctor who delivered him. In the early 20s, the family eventually moved to Charles Avenue in West Lexington, Kentucky. Marvin Jr., Marvy Pooh, we lovingly call him, added the E to the family name after going into show business. Gay's parents had been sharecroppers and his mother broke sharply from the rest of the black community by joining what seemed to her neighbors as an eccentric church, the House of God. Mamie Gay was said to be the first female member of the Pentecostal sect. According to Bishop Simon Peter Rawlings, chief apostle of the church, and for years Marvin Gay Sr.'s closest associate and friend, the movement was founded in 1918 by R.A.R. R. Johnson, a black man from New Bern, North Carolina. We follow biblical instructions, says Bishop Rawlings, and the Bible does not ask us to celebrate Jesus' birth or the crucifixion. Christmas and Easter are holidays that some might even view as pagan, and we feel obligated to ignore them. The dogma is strict. The male hierarchy is evident. The elders and deacons refer to one another by title, but the sight of the women in white is touching. Their heads are covered with white pillbox hats, lace flowing from the back, the crowns adorned with pale blue stars of David. Their young daughters wear black velvet skull caps with stars of David embroidered in white. Not long ago, says Estella Mayberry, Marvin's first cousin, and long-standing member of the Lexington Church, the women wore full white headdresses. They still do in many of the houses of God today. The feeling is warm and maternal. The women take on the appearance of spiritual nurses, and it's easy to see why a young Marvin Jr. was so deeply comfortable by the church. The church women, he remembered, oh, how they loved it when I sang. They'd hug me and smother me in their huge breasts. 
I liked the way that felt, being able to please them with my voice, reaching to God, feeling their satisfaction. I could always please mother by singing. Ooh, 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 foreshadowing, foreshadowing. We observe the dietary laws of the Old Testament, instructs Bishop Rawlings. No shellfish, no pork. We believe in divine healing. On the Day of Atonement, we fast and stay in church from sundown to sundown. 24 straight hours, much like the Orthodox Jews. If a brother or sister among us is moved to speak in tongues, which happens on occasion, we have absolute respect for the process. I loved my father's religion. Marvin Jr. told me at a very early age, this is him talking to David Ritz, I realized I was born into a very rootsy church, and I found it exciting. The idea of a tarrying thrilled and fascinated me. That's where you wait for the Holy Ghost, where you repeat over and over again, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, until the Spirit arrives. It can take minutes or hours. Later, I understand that it was similar to the way Eastern religions use mantras. We were tapping an energy force in the universe. Marvin Sr. followed his mother into the church and became an active member at an early age. While still a teenager, he began traveling through the South with evangelistic sister fame. Okay, again, we've heard plenty of times how when you're on the road, you know, rolling around with the, you know, church folks, you're going to see some nasty things. None of the other books that we read said this. But what Marvin Gaye said was that although, you know, things got down dirty and funky, it never took away from the message inside the church. It never to him took away from the fact that they were holy people that still carried the word of God inside of them. Our ministers, Bishop Rawlings explained, were not formally trained. Mr. Gay, like myself, was divinely inspired to serve God. We were ordained through the Spirit of God. I ain't mad at them for not having, you know, what is it, the theology degree or whatever, or a certificate or whatever it takes. I'm not mad at him for Let that. Let me say this. A lot of these church members really don't care about whether or not they are, you know, technically ordained or not. To me, and this is how I feel, can I get the message from you? As long as you're able to present the word to me in a way that I can receive it, you know, and incorporate it into my life so I can live, hopefully, then, you know, I really don't care if they go to school or not. In 1934, Gay met his wife-to-be, Alberta, in Washington, D.C., where he had come to preach. There was a tragedy in my younger life. Mrs. Gay had told me in her kitchen in Los Angeles in 1979 as she fixed Marvin's lunch. My father, for instance, was a violent man who once shot my mother. Mama survived, but the fear still lived inside me. My father died in a hospital for the insane. I never really had a father, and they didn't put me in school till I was eight. Okay, all right, so, you know, there might be some, um, issues mentally with her just not just being behind in regards to maturity i've never really had a father and they didn't put me in school till i was eight when i met my husband mrs gay told me during one of our long conversations i had just come from rocky mountain north carolina i also had an infant son michael i knew nothing about the city and city life Mr. Gay and Mr. Rawlings both courted me. I believe they both wanted to marry me. Sometimes the three of us would go out together and I'd kiss them on the cheek goodnight and wonder which man I liked better. Mr. Gay seemed more powerful. What is um, boggling to me that so long ago, you could literally go out with two men and it would be okay. Child, you sitting at the table with two men, the first thing people thinking, if it's one female sitting at the table with two men and she looks fairly decent, I'm like, oh, they about to fuck up. Only later on did I learn about the awful violence of the gay family back in Lexington. There were stories of shootings, gays against gays. 
On July 2nd, 1935, Marvin Sr. and Alberta were married in Washington, D.C., where they found an apartment in the Southwest Projects at 1617 First Street only a few blocks from the Anacostia River. Not wanting to raise the child as his own, Father Gay sent Michael to live with Alberta's sister, Pearl, in the same city. Two years later, their first child was born. They named the girl Jean. I think okay. intellectually, Marvin Gaye's mother is not there, okay? Because we will learn that she's one of those women that stay true to her religion. Earlier in the book, Marvy Poo had said that his father's church, although very strict, was comforting to him. Don't get me wrong. I told y'all that my father preached at a Holy Ghost church you know, for, for a minute, okay, for a minute. And I'm gonna tell you my time there was, was, was a trip. I'm not gonna tell you which church it is, but it was, it was a trip. And them hussies in that church met me for the first time, oh my God, oh my God. It was like everybody wanted to have a piece of me, okay, because my father was single. And I told y'all my father, although older, he looks very young, so you gotta be careful. Okay, when I tell you them hoes was standing in line to hug and kiss and feed me cake, you know, just love on me. I already got a mother and two grandmothers. I don't need you bitches. All the ladies was trying to come get me at the church, right? I was sitting next to my grandmother. I was like, Grandma, I don't know them. She was like, just appease them, baby. Go ahead. It was important that I have a male child, Mr. Gay said, in the living room of the Gramercy Place home when I interviewed him with his wife by his side in 1982. In her husband's presence, Mrs. Gay appeared almost a different person from when she'd spoken to me alone. Like I said, I am very, very old school when it comes down to my relationship. I'm not fitting to turn into no damn mouse when she comes around if we got company because if I turn it into a mouse, my family member's gonna be like, what the fuck's going on here? Is that bull dagger beating you? That wouldn't happen, but I am sweet when I talk to my wife. Except for when we arguing. When we arguing, she get the nickel. Now she was remarkably reticent, saying only a few words while her husband spoke for hours. A namesake is what I wanted, Father continued. The day he was born, I felt he was destined for greatness. I thank God for the blessing of his life. I thank God for Marvin. I knew he was a special child. My husband never wanted Marvin, Mrs. Gay told me, and he never liked him. He used to say that he didn't think he was really his child. I told him that was nonsense. He knew Marvin was his, but for some reason, he didn't love Marvin. And what's worse, he didn't want me to love Marvin either. Marvin wasn't very old before he understood that. The tragic triangle was established at birth. Father and son competing for mother's love a tension that only grew over the years, finally exploding in two angry blasts of fire. Marvin Pence Gay Jr. was born at Freeman's Hospital in Washington, D.C. on April 2nd, 1939, a Sunday, the same day of the week he died. In the in same the city, exactly one week later, the great black contralto, Marian Anderson, barred from singing at Constitution Hall by the Daughters of the American Revolution would perform at the Lincoln Memorial before 75,000 spectators on Easter morning, thanks to the intervention of Secretary of the Interior, Harold X. My father told me the story. Marvin remembered as an adult and it made a deep impression upon me. I felt a kinship to Miss Anderson, just as I'd always feel a great kinship with Mahalia Jackson. These were triumphant women. They were among the greatest singers the world had ever known. My father himself had a great voice and the capacity to become a great singer. Early on, I realized largely through dreams that I too was destined to be a singer. He was unable to lose the feeling that the world revolved around him. A spiritual, childlike ego would be one of Marvin's lifelong characteristics. Child, that's the characteristic of an Aries, period. Yeah. 
David Ritz is there talking to the father. The father sitting there pontificating about who he was, what he's capable of. Hell, I was a bad mother hunchy. I believed I had the power to heal, okay? As father, Marvin demanded, his dark eyes flashing when I told him what Mr. Gay had told me, how he lost that power. The elder Gay was irritated by such a question and instead talked about the early history with the church. In 1936, I had my first mission in Northtown, Pennsylvania. When we moved to Washington, services were conducted in our home. We were joined by another family, the Solomons, who actually lived with us and a few others. Our house was the church, which was the reason my children received such strong religious preparation. Seemed like Mrs. Gay's mother lived there too. Remembered Howard Solomon, now a bishop at the House of God on East Capitol Street in Washington? My wife Maud and our two children made up the congregation. There was a time when Bishop Gay had a little mission, and I'll never forget Marvin Jr. playing the piano and singing about I must see my Jesus someday. In his early years, Marvin had access to the keyboards, which he learned totally by ear. That is so synonymous with DC. Okay. Even as a preteen, he had developed into a fine two-fisted country church pianist. He could also play heartfelt blues. Music was the joyful part of services in the house of God, which in other ways bound its members to an unbending code. You got that right. In the early days, explained Jean Gay, that's the sister, now an insurance executive in Los Angeles. The Solomons and the Gays were the only two families in the church. Father's church was extremely hard on young people, especially women. We couldn't wear sleeveless dresses, nylons, lipsticks, or nail polish. No dancing was allowed, and for a long time, no movies or television. The Sabbath was strange, said Marvin. We were forced to cut off the outside world. Come Friday night at sundown, everything stopped for us. We weren't allowed to play. We couldn't even ride the bus. All we could do was pray and praise God. Father instructed us on the exact interpretation of the Bible. That's, that's the dangerous part. You have people that interpret the Bible in order to cater to their own evil ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things in the Bible that are wrong, okay, or illegal, okay? But people use those things to help perpetuate their own craziness. Okay. Seemed like Mr. Gay had a grudge against his son. He had expectations which were too high for a little boy to reach observed Mrs. Beatrice Carson, a distant cousin of Alberta Gay from Nashville, North Carolina. Mrs. Carson came to live in the Gay apartment with her own infant son in 1946 and stayed for five years by then. The Gays had two other children besides Jean and Marvin, Frankie, three years younger than Marvin, and Zoila, nicknamed Sweetsy three years younger than Frankie. In those years, Mrs. Carson said me, Jean, and my son, Linwood, were sharing one bedroom. Frankie and Marvin were in another, and Mr. and Mrs. Gay had Sweetsy with them. When I arrived, it hurt me to see what was happening. Little Marvin would wet his bed, and his father would beat him unmercifully. Me and Jean and Babe, that's what I call Mrs. Gay, who, as close to me as a sister, would all get on our hands and knees and pray for him to stop beating the child. We believed in prayer, and we believed in mercy, but it seemed like the man had it in for the child. We know that Mother Gay has mental health issues on her side because her father passed in a hospital for the mentally ill. Father Gay has issues because he come from a place of violence within the family. Let's go backwards right quick. Remember when Mother Gay had explained to us that back there in Lexington, Kentucky, the gays without the E was round there shooting at each other. So there is no kind of um, rules set in place for family where it 
comes down to the father, okay? If he's your cousin, if he getting on your nerves, you get rid of him. Even though your last name is gay too, it don't matter. You're a competition to me. And if I need to get you up out of here, we will get you up out of here. Though I believe that Mother Gay is sweet, kind, and um, amazing, you know, and loving, I still believe that intellectually she's not there. And she relies on the teachings of her husband to guide her through the universe, which is very, very dangerous, right? Because you stand back and you allow things to happen to your children. It wasn't simply that my father beat me, Marvin confessed one April night in Belgium in 1982, as he peered from his huge apartment window down into the dark North Sea. His back turned to me, that would be David Ritz. So that was bad enough. By the time I was 12, there wasn't an inch of my body that hadn't been bruised and beaten by him. But father did something else far worse. You see, he's a man with a subtle mind. He understood that if you're interested in inflicting pain, prolonging the process adds to the excitement. Because we all have a story just like this, where your mother, you know, where you know the school then called the house and told your mammy that you didn't play hooky today. You know that, okay? When you come through the door and you see your mother and she's sitting in the kitchen, nay, nay, uh, I got a call from the school today. You did, mama? You did? Mm-hmm, that's what they told me. What, mama? What'd they tell you, mama? Don't worry about it. Just get your ass back there in the room, do your homework. I'll be back there to whoop your ass later. And while you're back there doing your homework, you are definitely contemplating I'm running away because this ass whooping is fitting to be crucial. So we all have had that situation happen to us, but it does not make it okay. All four of us had bed wedding problems, Jean Gay told me with a candor reminiscent of Marvin. That should tell you something about the nervousness and fear that exists in the household. Father hit us all and demanded that we be naked for the whippings. Then he'd get his strap or switch and beat us till he saw welts on our skin. He wouldn't be satisfied until he saw those welts. In his mind, that meant we learned our lesson. Marvin was never so lucky. He constantly provoked father. Sound like an Aries. That sound like Aries. Now, yes. That child make you want to knock his ass off. Marvin was never so lucky. He constantly provoked father. He'd disappear on Saturday mornings when it was time to go to church. He'd use father's hairbrush, not bother to clean it, and leave it in a place where he knew he'd be caught. Against father's orders, he'd wander off after school and come home late. All these things Marvin did over and over and over again, knowing he'd be beaten almost asking to be beaten. From the time he was seven until he became a teenager, Marvin's life at home consisted of a series of brutal whippings. And even if I don't do something, you won't find something to beat me for anyway. So I'm gonna make sure that I give you a fucking reason. I get it. Certain he could never win father's approval Gay sought his attention through antagonism. For the rest of his life, Marvin would express his need for affection through provocations of violence. The perverse pattern of behavior which would literally kill him. done so please remember to like share to facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com now remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people
that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, have a good one. DC, I love you. I'll be home in May, baby.